Um, so as I said earlier, we're going to show you actual uh, demos like on real computers. Uh, just just a little warning: those um, this is those are prototypes. They're not uh, actual real side designed by real people running real businesses. They're just a way to show you how frog insights could work. They're just examples, and we really count and rely on the community, you here in the room, and who else is uh, streaming this uh, stream live feed, to come up with new ideas. We actually will have a little later tonight uh, a presentation by a group of, uh, I call them users, you know, in the generic term, of, of designers, of people who think uh, the internet as a way to communicate ideas in, a, uh, in an ad hoc uh, format. And they will show you or present new ideas. But here, uh, we're just presenting the basis of what could be a frog site. And we're presenting in a way that demonstrates that uh, a given site can be uh, presented exactly the same way on, uh, right now we have five platforms. So we're gonna go one by one, starting with, uh, uh, Linux, and then uh, Windows, Mac OS, uh, iOS, and Android and to finish. So, uh, let's go. All right. So, imagine you run a restaurant, and you want, so it's basically the main thing you want to do, is you want your uh, patrons to be able to find your menu online, right? Because today you can, uh, you know, have a web version, like a website. You can uh, develop an app on iPhone and maybe an app on iPad and maybe also an app on Android and let's, let's get really complex. But you could also design a frogging site. So we're going to show you how a restaurant owner uh, would present, have a presence online through Frogans. This is Linux, Linux, yes. And we're going to show you uh, that uh, the Frogans player is one application over here um, on, my, on my desktop, like my browser, like my uh, word processor, my spreadsheet. And when I call Frogans player, it's here. Isn't it cute? Yeah. And this is everything you'll see about Fragrance Player here. This is where you uh, call for commands, you open new sites, you close them all, you hide them all through this little circle here. So for example, uh, right click, open Fragrance Site, and I'm going to open that site I was talking about just earlier, this uh, London-based restaurant called Orangeray. All right, so address, as you saw. Can you uh, right click on this uh, on the site? There we go, see? That's the uh, address here. Frogans, asterisk, orange array. I, as the owner of the restaurant, I reserved the, the site name here, orange array, on the, what we call the public uh, Frogans network, which is uh, identified by Frogans star. And which means that anyone, any person, in the world uh, who has a Fragrance player available only types this address and comes up with this site. This site can be navigated. So you, first of all, you can move it around you know, on your desktop. You can uh, move it on the side, on the left, whatever. It, it's always underneath the little uh, Fragrance player here. Uh, and you can also navigate through the site inside by clicking on the buttons. For example, I would click on our menus to call up the different menus for the restaurant. Very basic, but for example, what's for lunch today? Right. So see a combination of text, geographical shapes, uh, images, and buttons. Uh, I can go back by clicking on our menu, and go back by clicking on Laurent Ray. All right. So it's very simple. This kind of looks like a regular website. You know, it's nothing extremely fancy, it just does the job, presents the menus. There's also a map to how to get there. Just click on this one, and here's the address, here's how to get there. Very simple. This can be designed in a matter of a few hours. You know. Well, the beauty of this 
is once I design this for browser on Linux, for against player, I don't have to design it again. You know, I can, um, I will cut it up on different platforms later. Second example, I am, say I run a social network. I um, say in the, the scale of a family, maybe. And I created this uh, Fragan site called Fragan's asterisk family. Family, again, I reserve the term family through my uh, preferred registrar called here FCR account administrator. And I design this uh, little thing that really doesn't look like a website at all. It has this you know, transparency layer you can see through, and you can um, move it around. It goes over the other, the other site. And when the, the cursor goes over the first site, the previous site, then this one takes the focus. That's how uh, Frogan sites interact with, with, with uh, one another. Um, let's go back to family a second here. Uh, if I click on this, uh, this one button here called Laura, I'll show you that a slide can have a really different shape. Uh, this is the slide called Laura. You know, remember the, the, the presentation earlier where we had um, slides of different shapes? Well, this is exactly what the shape of this slide is. This is completely functional. This has buttons, this has images, it has text. Uh, you can navigate that, you can click on agenda. And in that slide, so that would be slide number three, if you will, I can navigate more by clicking, for example, on the apples and I check Laura's agenda online. All right, so she publishes the information she wants and I am connected to the site and I can uh, navigate that. So really the, the limit is the imagination here. You can think about uh, slide the shape of a pear or slide the shape of a computer or slide the shape of a table. Doesn't matter, everything is uh, doable here. So let's click that. All right, let's place older, can go back home. All right, um, I told you that Fragan sites can interact with, with one another, but it also they always displayed on top of windows, uh, of the, all the other windows, windows of other applications on the operating system. So here, for example, I have a, a word processor, Fragan's uh, player here, and you see when I open the word processor, even if the word processor has the focus, it still shows underneath the Froggen site. Right. I type it here, but this site is still over. This one is still over the, uh, the window. All right, so this is called parallel surfing. So you're working somewhere while still viewing uh, the Froggen site. By the way, could we make them smaller, a little smaller? There you go. So here is a feature called the leap out. You know, when you see, when you watch a, uh, a Fragrant site, you can reduce the size in which it shows, and at a certain point, it turns into a different format. So that is part of the design that uh, allows you to make different um, uh, sizes, different forms of a given site. And uh, what else? Well, Philippe, wh wh what about if I'm working on my word processor and I've got the uh, Frogan sites uh, up, they're over my word processor, I want to get rid of them and then bring them back. Is there a simple way of doing that? There is indeed a simple way to clean up the space, the whole desktop, by double-clicking on the Frogan's player. Up, oh, there you go, they're gone. And if you want to call them up, double-click, and they're back. So this is, creates a new navigation, a new browsing experience on your desktop um, that makes really a Froggen site like a class apart. Um, there's a third, the third, slide, uh, third site I wanted to call up here. Uh, remember we, we talked about the, the first part of the address and we, we said the first two were uh, Froggen's public network addresses, starting by Froggen's asterisk. And then I wanted to show you an example, a fictitious example, but still an example of the city of St. Matthew in California uh, that bought, registered the Frogans network called St. Matthew so that their address is not Frogans star, but St. Matthew star, and then they can choose whatever name they want on the right-hand side of the asterisk. Here we have an example of a, a Frogans slide 
uh, site, sorry, called St. Matthew City Hall. So let's go. All right. So here you can imagine the applications, like a, um, a municipality, of course, but a state, a country, a company, uh, a brand in general that can uh, register the first part called a network part of the address and then decline in as many sites as possible or as wanted on the right side of the asterisk. Here, this is the institutional presence of the city of St. Matthew on Frogan's uh, star network. So it works the same way. We can browse the site. We can uh, click on uh, mayor, for example, to see uh, a picture of the mayor. Hello, Mr. Smith. Uh, you can navigate. Um, it's really not a, like a very elaborate website, but it uh, allows you to see um, that you can, uh, on what you call Frogan's the dedicated uh, network, can do exactly the same thing you do on public networks. All right. Good. All right, so that was on Linux. And to demonstrate my promise that uh, it would do the same thing on other platforms, we're going to switch right now to the second computer that's here, which is a uh, Windows computer. If the technology wants to follow here. So there's big suspense here. So we're going to see exactly the same thing. I hope, I really hope so, because <laughs> we've worked on that for days, so uh, I hope. All right. So um, this is a desktop that's familiar to uh, most of you. Uh, we are in a Windows environment here. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. So it's, it's a little repetitive, because that's what we want, we want to demonstrate. So let's call up first the Frogans Player app. It's next to uh, Firefox. It shows here as a circle, of course. It can be uh, moved around on your desktop. It can be open up. You can type an address. We'll use on purpose the same address for against star orange ray. All right. And that's exactly the same sites we had before. So remember, this site was developed once, you know, the designer worked on one code and only one, and that code is being displayed by different version of Frogan's net uh, player. The first one was on Linux, this one is on um, uh, Windows. Uh, the same buttons, our menus, the same navigation, the same dinner menu, all right, okay, the same text, exactly the same code. If I go back to our menu and go back then to the home slide over here, I have the same picture when I tap getting there or getting here. All right. So if this is not spectacular, it's because it's designed not to be. Uh, we want exactly the same experience on platform A, which was Linux, and platform B, which is, uh, in this case, Windows. Um, let's call up the other one, it's called a family. Exactly, so here's family. And then um, the same navigation as possible. Uh, we can, the same way, you know, going to make the focus on one or the other, you can reduce the size of a site uh, with uh, the, the control uh, key. You can you have the leap out function here that changes the appearance of a site when it goes under um, a certain zoom factor. Uh, thank you. All right, and the same way as the first one, when you uh, open a um, a piece of uh, like this this button, for example, well, that button also uh, is clickable in exactly the same way. Uh, do we have a um, a word, a word a spreadsheet or something to open? Or a, um, this is a, the web browser, maybe? There we go. There we go. Exactly the same thing here. It's persistent. It's on your screen 
at any time. And if you want to clean up the, the desktop, all you have to do is double click on the uh, fragrance player. All right? Simple? Do you like it? I like it very much. I'm actually reading some of the uh, reactions on Twitter uh -huh. as you're live demoing. And I think I'm not the only one that likes it. Uh, good enough. Good, good. Um, Remember I said earlier I would say uh, I would present this, this, those sites on five different platforms. Number three is uh, Mac OS. I know there's a lot of Mac enthusiasts here. Uh, so I'm going to show not all the sites, but uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to demonstrate another uh, fragrance site on uh, Mac, the Mac platform. If the tech agrees with us, good job. So here, um, here is on a Macintosh platform. The fragrance player is here, along my other applications, and I'm going to open it. See, so it's an experimental version. Same look and feel, same navigation, same story. If I do right-click, I'm going to present another one, another site called uh, Lunar Module. Just to introduce a little variety here in the demo. Um, though the beauty and one of the main uh, interests in this one is that we implemented a number of buttons. You know, we talked about navigations between slides. You know, how do you navigate between slides by pressing buttons? Where here again, um, on this design of a lunar module, we implemented 12 buttons. So you don't see them, but when you hover your mouse over the, d the design, the red area is called the active area of the buttons. That's where you can click to navigate to the next slide. And you see that the, the area, the zones that are active here can be of different shapes and forms. And that is also very important. You don't have to uh, limit yourself to radio buttons or drop down menus or uh, this or that. You can create a button the shape you want. Even a button with two different instances. There's one where, I think it's on the side. If you go on this side, it, there you go. You see here, you can click here or there, and it's the same, it's the same button, it's the same action uh, described in the slide. Um, that's very powerful because you can think of applications where you click on a map, you know, where you have different areas of different sizes. You can think, I mean, that's again, that's the community's job to think about applications, but uh, the fragrance technology allows you to do that. All right. Um, I'm not going to go through the same sites again on Mac, but you get the gist. Uh, now, but we. Uh, I was just going to say that uh, you might, uh, I don't know if you're able to show us, we, we'd love to see this type of demonstration, but uh, on a mobile device, perhaps. Well, we'll see if we can make that happen. Um, we prepared a little uh, uh, viewer for uh, mobile phones. And if uh, we follow the script, we should be able to show you the same thing on um, iOS. So I don't know whose iPhone is uh, under the viewer. But usually, we should be able to see that. I see a good sign here. All right. So this is, I'm not sure which version of iPhone it is, but you recognize now the uh, logo of Fragrance Player. And that logo, uh, when you open the app, oh, you'll see a big finger on top now. But um, this app, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Valia, uh, this app has uh, a menu bar over here. Right now, in this prototype, only two buttons are uh, implemented, the uh, About button here and the Menu button there. So, prototype. Menu button is where you enter the address of the site you want to uh, navigate. Let's, uh, shall we use the, the last one, uh, Learner Module, for example? Uh, orangeray or whatever. So, so. so again, at the risk of repeating myself, um, the owners of the restaurant Orangeray only had the site designed once, 
and now it's presented exactly the same way here on the iPhone. Um, same menus, same uh, look and feel, some design, same graphical resources. It's exactly the same thing. You don't have to have um, an image in one format and then in the same image in a different format for a different platform. It's the same one. The difference here um, is that you navigate the site with what we call the pad over here, not the iPad, the pad. And the pad is where you put your finger to um, jump from button to button. So you browse from left to right and left, uh, right to left, and then it goes from button one to button two to button three, four, and five. And when you want to, when you, when you want to press a button, all you have to do is tap the pad. Uh, tap uh, menus. Can we check what's uh, for lunch today? There we go, same asparagus thing. And then uh, can we go back to the menus and then back to the home slide? All right. So here again, you can make the, the side smaller by moving your finger up or down. All right. Or you can open another site by using the menu. See, the, if we go back one second, on the, um, sorry, this is called a mosaic um, uh, area of the player where you can see all the sites that are open at a given time. So we're going to use the, the, the open menu here to open a new, um, a new site. So for example, uh, Lunar Manual maybe. There we go. The reason, well, the main reason why I chose this one to present here is remember there were buttons that are very small. So if you're on a large screen, you'd think, oh, I just use my mouse to point on that, that area. But if it's on, a, on an iPhone like this, it's actually pretty hard to put your big finger exactly where the button is. But with the pad, it's not a problem at all because all you have to do is move your, your finger on the pad until the moment where the buttons are actually highlighted. And when they are, you just click on the pad and we go to the next slide. All right? So the navigation system that's included in the FDSL code is designed to work the same way, but a different interface on desktop and on mobile uh, devices. All right. You can even switch from one side to the other. Thank you so much, Olya. So that's with a swipe um, gesture. You swipe left or you swipe right and it goes to the next or the, or the previous site that's open at this given time on this device. And by the way, the same um, uh, works on the other platform we're going to demonstrate. And the last one we're going to demonstrate tonight, which is Android. Um, you recognize your uh, favorite Android uh, interface here, Google Player, the same logo, you open, and I don't even have to say a word because it's exactly the same thing as an iPhone. So, <laughs> boom, about, and then the player to open the, um, the address. Pick the one you want, make like a little surprise. All right, family, all right. Now, by now it looks familiar. So same device, same na navigation. Um, you can use the pad to browse from button to button. And when you get to Laura, maybe you just tap on the button, boom. All right. Uh, we're actually hiring people to create new, uh, new sites here, so to create more diversity here. Okay, and uh, if you open the last one, maybe the uh, Saint Matthew, to see how uh, uh, dedicated fragrance network addresses are also available on mobile uh, devices. Right. 
ago. So you call up, looks exactly the same way, same pictures, same uh, pitch again. Okay. One more, last thing, maybe if you go back to the uh, mosaic, you'll see all the sites that are open on this device at a given time, and this is called the uh, the small version. So you can you know stack them up. You can have many sites open at once, and then when you open, you can just swipe to go from one to the other. All right, that allows the uh, publisher of the site to be present on mobile uh, easily without having to develop a new app, having to submit it to um, the App Store or Google Play or who knows what, and also that uh, when uh, Windows Phone is available, then that site will also work on Windows Phone. Philippe, thank you very much. Uh, even though the content that we've seen was this, exactly the same on both uh, Android and iPhone uh, media, uh, I have to admit that it looked much better on the iPhone. <laughs> But um, Are you part of the tribe of the mega church? No, not at all. <laughs> I, I always make a little iPhone joke during one of these conferences. Um, Philippe, don't, don't stay with us because I do want to uh, open this up for questions. Uh, we are running a little over time, but uh, this is an exciting moment for all of us. Uh, it really is the first time we've had such an in-depth demo of the uh, Frogan sites, and I think we've all seen, uh, I mean, certainly uh, to me, there's a lot of potential there. It's a real eye-opener to see, for example, how easy it is to publish a site and to do so once and for all. You've done it, you don't need to go back and redesign it. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there, for example, run your own blogs, but if you have done so and designed and run your own blogs, you at one point will have come up against the problem of how do I make it portable for other devices? Uh, I don't have the resources or the know-how to do that. That problem just fades away with this. You, what you see here is really a, a, a way to empower everybody to be able to publish simply, easily, and cheaply, which is which That's is correct. fantastic. And, and I would have to emphasize that um, you're talking about a, a, an already known usage here, um, but really the, the, we see the Fragrance Technologies as a way to publish new, publish new experiences for new type of content. And I believe the, the, the next person uh, talking tonight is going to uh, talk about that in, more, uh, in better terms than I do, because that's his, his uh, uh, trade. Um, but basically, it opens a new, a new realm of poss possibilities, and to, you have to imagine new ways. I mean, if I take only one example, if, if you think about uh, a few years ago, you know, who would think uh, Twitter would have come with so many different top, uh, possible usages um, with such a little and simple uh, technology at the beginning. So we en encourage everybody in the ecosystem to think about new ways to use this technology given the type of uh, uh, characteristic that we just uh, showcased. So perhaps I can uh, go to the floor, see if there are any questions. Uh, is someone, I don't know if uh, someone's managing the, any of the questions that might be coming through Twitter um, during your demo. I had a look, there were some comments, quite a few comments on Twitter, but I don't know if we can get to them uh, during this live exercise. But certainly let's first of all see if there are any questions from the room for uh, Philippe, please. I see a hand, but I can't quite see who or where that person is. Hello. Um, hello. I can't hear. Yeah, the mic isn't on. And f feel free to speak French if you're more comfortable in French. Hello. OK. Um, during the last presentations, you told us about uh, security and uh, all the things uh, you make to ensure the security of the users. But now, uh, at the beginning of the presentation, you explained we would be able to um, use a script like Java or PHP or other languages. How do you ensure the security using external scripts in other languages? Right. Um, and, and it's a great 
point you're making here. The, the, uh, if you remember the last or the one but last slide in the presentation, we talked about a script. That script was running on the publisher's server. So basically what we say is the script cannot run on the device itself. No, we forbid that completely. But it has to run on the server. And the only server on which the script can run is the publisher server. So there's a key-based identification system between the client and the server. And the, the client will only accept results from a script that's running on the publishing server. That does not completely eliminate any risk of malicious script. But it would ha you would have to, in order to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to be malicious, you ha would have to run the bad script or the uh, unsafe script on the, s on the publishing uh, servers. So that is a lot, uh, that's a tall order compared to running a script on the device. Did I answer your question? Okay. Thank you very much. And we put that slide back up so that right. people can... So this is a remote uh, vision of the, that's the publishing server. This is the device over there. So just to be clear, no script is running on the device. Thank you very much. Any further questions, please? Hi. Don't be shy. I'm sure you have lots of questions. This is the first time you're seeing this, after all. I, I think that it... I think I saw a hand at the back there, but I'm not sure. Just there, please. Hello, it's uh, Brian Watson. If I click or activate a button on a slide, can I have a second instance of that slide open, or does it always open on top of the original slide? It always open on the top of the original slide. Uh, one site cannot be op can only be open at once on a given device, and when it's open, it's only represented by one slide. It makes it very simple. The, the key idea is the navigation has to be pretty simple, um, uh, because uh, we, we try to make it accessible for everyone. So we try to make it accessible in all the languages. We try to make it uh, accessible for all the, the classes of users on the internet. And uh, we believe that simplicity is the keyword here. So you click on a button, it opens the next slide and closes the previous one. Just that. Thank you very much. Any more questions? I think they're all a bit stunned, Philippe. It's the first time they've seen well, this. But, yeah, we, we, uh, we gladly uh, welcome uh, questions and comments and uh, suggestions. Um, I think Twitter would probably be the best way to uh, collect those. So if, if after you see that, if you think about it, and I'm also talking to the people uh, watching the, the live stream here or uh, the file on, uh, on YouTube later, if you have a question or a suggestion, please feel free to uh, tweet on uh, to uh, Frog and Stack, and we'll be uh, happy to respond to uh, request suggestions and criticisms too. And we also monitor the uh, uh, Frog and hashtag. So whatever you're you're comfortable using, and uh, if there are questions, if you're watching us. Uh, tonight uh, live and uh, questions come to mind later on. You can also use the conference website conference.frogans.org uh, to find out about how to be here tomorrow or how to follow the conference uh, live tomorrow. Philippe, uh, I want to thank you very much. I also want to thank the two people that work very hard with you, I know, to make the demo possible, Yang Wang and Aurelien uh, Pro, who was uh, just uh, uh, there in the, in, the, in the light just behind you.